several years ago, the focus of the MS coalition was mental health and MS. I thought that was good. But on the other hand, I knew what that meant. That meant the next year that wasn't going to be the focus. And I always think that we should have a high focus on this, especially now we've been having a lot of discussions about COVID-19. COVID-19 has led to a lot of isolation, a lot of the things that we do as human beings, family events. I mean, if you think about the last Thanksgiving people had together and you think people maybe didn't even talk to each other because they were fighting about politics and you think about how all that seems so silly when we're in a situation like we're in right now. And so I worry a lot about children without multiple sclerosis. I worry about children who are socially isolated, not in schools, and are having more self-harm and more things like that are going on. With MS, depression can happen for several reasons. One is depression is just very common in society, whether you have MS or not. And then you take, well, you're taking someone in the prime of their life, the age range that where they're most productive usually, and you're giving them a lifetime or chronic diagnosis. That could be depressing. That can make you sad and feel isolated. There can be a sense of loss. Even if other people look at you and say, oh, you look so good. Well, you're not, you know you're not able to do the things or you don't feel comfortable doing the things you once were able to do. That can be depressing. And so just that situation can actually be depressing. But then also MS affects your brain and depression is in the brain. And it's interesting, we talk about depression now being part of psychiatry. I actually think that we're very close to depression being considered a neurological diagnosis. What I mean by that is there was first a field called neurology, and there was a fairly famous neurologist named Sigmund Freud, and he invented another field called psychiatry. And then somehow we separated. We still are boarded by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. And actually, all of your neurologists, their examination was 70% neurology, 30% psychiatry. All of the psychiatrists, their examination was 70% psychiatry, 30% neurology. And I almost feel like as we start to understand any condition better, as it stops being so mysterious and so like in the air, it stops being psychiatry and it starts going on into neurology. And I really think we're getting there with depression. With depression, there's really two ways of you thinking about approaching it. One is through the general idea of talk therapy, and that can mean various things. But one of the techniques that's used a lot is CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, there's it really depends on who the person is, whether you, you know, people think about going to a psychiatrist is like you're sitting there with Sigmund Freud, he's smoking a cigar and asking you about your mother's relationship with you. That's not what psychi that's not what psychology is. And then on the other hand, you also have medications. And so we now have medicines that are affecting various aspects of depression, meaning having to do with the neurotransmitters, the way that one nerve communicates with another one. And so one of the neurotransmitters we think a lot about uh, is going to be serotonin. And so what we're gonna to try to do is we're going to try to affect that serotonin level and that's gonna be one of the things we do. One of the other ones we look at a lot nowadays, we're looking more at things like NMDA receptors because they have to do with glutamate. And glutamate's another neurotransmitter, and we can have effects with there. There's even ways that are not a medicine and not talking. We even have ways now that we do magnetic therapy to people's brains, and it actually has a really beneficial effect on their depression. And so what I would say is just because you're already seeing all the doctors for MS and you don't want to see another doctor, there are things that can be offered both by therapists and those can either be licensed social workers, they can be psychologists, they can be PhD PhDs, frankly, a lot of times, they can be your pastor. Pastors sometimes are very good at pastoral counseling, and that can be very beneficial. But then there's also the psychiatrist, and psychiatrists, besides writing the prescriptions for the same kinds of medicines that neurologists use, they also maybe are more familiar with the use of, say, magnetic therapy to try to help with depression as well.